안녕하세요. NIPIL 주가 원장 임필입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Impil of LIM Pil Dental Clinic. I'm honored to meet with you as a master course basic director. The master course is currently being held offline and we are going to address a part of the master course online today. Today I'm going to talk about choosing the right implant. Let us begin. What kind of implant to choose and to place? There are many considerations to make. We need to look at patient condition, bone quality and quantity, and soft tissue, crown height, should be considered. Also, we need to think of how we're going to set the surgical protocol, whether we're going to do one stage or two stage surgery. This needs to be determined by the surgeon. Also, when final prosthesis should be delivered should be determined. In other words, loading time needs to be chosen. Depending on different situation, appropriate implant needs to be chosen. This is a guideline for choosing implant. A table has been made and projected, and this is not something that is absolute. This is not a absolute guide, but it's something that we can reference whether we are going to do two-stage or one-stage surgery. Depending on that, you can choose the different implant options. In the case of Ostom implant, there is KS, SS, TS, US, and MS. TS and KS are internal submerged type bone level implant. SS is internal non-submerged implant. It's dedicated for one-stage surgery, and in the case of U.S., it was used frequently. It's external type implant. M.S. is for anterior area where the space is narrow. Body type, diameter, length. There are many factors here, and by looking at these, we need to choose which implant would be appropriate. Crown length, soft tissue thickness, whether bone graft is done or not. Quality of bone tissue. The quality of the bone. Tooth location. Various factors need to be considered. After looking at all of these factors, we need to determine which implant is appropriate. In choosing the right implant, a couple of factors have been listed. First is different types of implant systems, implant body types, diameters, length, and implant surface. We will not be able to address all of it. We will look up to implant diameter due to time constraint. First, let's look at TS implant from Austin. It is bone level implant. It is an internal submerged type implant. Implant is placed and cover screw is connected. It can either be submerged or, as shown on right, right after implant placement, healing abutment can be connected to do one-stage surgery. Two different types of surgery can be performed depending on the surgeon's choice. If we do one-stage surgery, implant is placed and healing abutment is connected and as shown, it is bone level implant. In the case of bone level implant, implant depths should be in line with the bone depths, but we need to consider bone resorption and biologic width. Therefore, 
it should be slightly deeper by one or two millimeters when we think about placement depths. We also need to consider the length of clinical crown. As shown in this image, the soft tissue height is here, and this is the length of clinical crown. If there's gingival resorption, and then the length of clinical crown will go up. This is natural tooth. This is the same for implant. After we place implant and connect the abutment, on top of it, crown is fabricated and placed. The abutment height and crown thickness needs to be considered. The gingival height should be considered as well. Clinical crown length needs to be considered from the implanted top to the occlusal surface of the crown. That is the way to proceed with surgery. TS system is a submerged type implant, therefore it is easier to adjust implant placement depths. In other words, if there's lack of clearance with the antagonist, because the TS system is submerged type, if necessary, the implant can be placed deeper into the bone level. Compared with SS system, which is dedicated for one-stage surgery, it is much easier to adjust implant depths. We need to consider clinical crown length and think of where the implanted top needs to be positioned. TS type implant. If it is placed, you can do bone graft or you can forego it. Regardless, we can place the implant and proceed to stage surgery as shown here. Next is KS implant. It's the same. TS and KS implant systems are bone level implant with similar design. There is a slight design difference. In the case of TS implant, the platform is dual platform and KS is single platform. The tapered angle and connection. The tapered angle where the abutment is connected differs in the case of TS, it is 11 degrees, and KS, it's 15 degrees. The cutting edge of thread looks different. KS has reverse cutting edge design. There is a slight difference in terms of detail, but KS and TS implant are Internal submerged type bone level implant. Let's look at SS implant. In the case of SS implant, it was referred to as ITI type in the past. This is dedicated for one stage surgery, and as shown on the image, implant placement depths is like this, and up to this thread, it is buried under bone. The smooth surface area or the gingival part is like this. This is at gingival level. This is an implant dedicated for one stage surgery. Just like TS implant, the SS implant also requires considerations of uh, space for prosthesis. You need to consider the height of gingival part and minimal height of abutment and thickness of the crown. You need to think of how deep the implant should be placed. 
considering these factors. What is important is that if there is lack of clearance with the antagonist in the lower posterior area, Then, in the case of SS implant, which is dedicated for one-stage surgery, there can be some difficulty. This problem is not impossible to overcome, but compared with bone-level implants, if there's lack of occlusal clearance with the antagonist, it can be quite disadvantageous, especially in the posterior region. We need to choose the right implant depending on different situations. If soft tissue thickness is sufficient, as shown, implants should be placed at bone level. And if the soft tissue thickness is about 1.5 millimeters to 3.5 millimeters, when SS implant is placed, it should be placed at tissue level so that smooth surface is within the gingival part. If soft tissue thickness is thin, then the machined surface may be exposed. Such results can occur, therefore you need to consider soft tissue thickness to determine the implant placement position and determine what kind of implant you're going to use. When bone graft is unnecessary, SS type 1 stage dedicated implant can be used. It is not to say that you cannot use SS implant if you need to do bone graft, but because of the design, TS implant, which is internal submerged implant, it would be more favorable. You need to determine whether you're going to use one stage dedicated implant or, or implant for two stage surgery. Next, I'm going to talk about the US implant. This was used very frequently in the past. It is external type implant. As we all know, there's hexagon on top of implant platform. And this hexagon shape is formed above bone level. Implant is placed as shown. You can submerge it by connecting healing cap. Or you can connect the healing abutment and do one stage surgery. Depending on the situation, the surgeon needs to determine whether one stage or two stage surgeries need to be done. Once US implant is placed, you can connect the healing abutment and do one stage surgery like this. Even when using US implant, you need to consider the clinical crown length. You need to think of gingival height, abutment height, and crown thickness. Clinical crown length needs to be calculated thoroughly to determine implant placement depths. And also, you need to consider that to choose the right to implant. If US implant has been placed, hex goes on top of bone level, you can do bone graft or forego it. Regardless of the situation, you can use US implant. Let's look at implant body type. Implant body type can be straight and it could also be tapered. The labor of taper can be 1.5 degrees and on the far right it shows a 6 degree taper. The level of taper is more severe in this case.
This is not an absolute rule, but in general, in the case of upper compared with lower, the bone quality is known to be softer. And compared with upper, lower is known to be harder. We need to determine implant accordingly, whether we're going to place the implant in the upper anterior, upper posterior, lower anterior, or lower posterior. Depending on bone quality, your choice of implant should differ. In the case of straight implant, from the top to the apex, the form is straight. The difference with a straight body and tapered body is that easily put in the case of tapered body, it can be easily fixated within bone. Hence, if the bone quality is really weak and soft in order to get good primary stability, you can use tapered body implant to get good primary stability. That would be better. Yes, this is not a 100% must. This is something that surgeons should determine, but comparatively, tapered body can be better. If the bone quality is normal bone, it doesn't matter whether you choose straight body or 1.5 degree taper or 6 degree taper. You can choose depending on the situation. And if the bone quality is extremely hard, as shown, straight or 1.5 degree taper body are recommended. That should be your choice of implant. Let's look at implant diameter. There's no absolute rule as to what diameter you should place in what area. Upper anterior, lower anterior, upper posterior, and lower posterior. There is slight difference depending on surgeon, but in general, people tend to use these options more frequently. In the case of upper anterior, diameters range from 3.5 millimeter to 4.0 millimeter. You need to consider the width of natural tooth, mesiodistal width of natural tooth and place the implant. So this should be appropriate. At times 4.5 can be used, but in general, mostly people use either 3.5 or 4.0 millimeter diameter implants. In the case of lower anterior, you need to use the smallest diameter implant, so it'll be 2.5 millimeter or 3.0 millimeter. You can use up to 3.5 millimeter as well. One body type implant can be placed. One body type implant should be placed in lower anterior only. In the case of upper posterior, let's look at the different diameters, 4.5, 5.0, and 5.5 millimeter implant can be placed. When I place implant in the upper posterior area, especially the molar area, I use diameter 5.0 or 5.5 often. There can be differences depending on the surgeon, but you need to just take note of it as reference. If we know about these, it will be of great help in determining the length and diameter and type of implant. It's the same for lower posterior as well. Mostly 4.5, 5.0, and 5.5 millimeter implants are placed. At times, 6 millimeter implants can be placed. In general, choices are made within this scope. Let's look at the overall image. The surgeon chooses this kind of diameters because implant should be placed in line with the diameter of the natural tooth. Considering the mesiodistal width of natural tooth, as shown on the image, implant is placed lower 
than the CEJ of natural tooth, so therefore the diameter should be smaller. Depending on anterior and posterior area, you need to choose the diameters of 3.5, 4.0, or 4.5, or 5.0. Today, I've talked about basics in choosing the right implant. Specifics can be addressed at offline master course, so I hope you stay tuned. Thank you.